Hi and welcome to Car Mechanical and today I'm going to take you through how to replace the wing on your Audi A3. This could also apply to quite a few different models as well as the principle will be the same. So you can see the wing damage I've got and I've covered this in some other videos as well because I bought a replacement wing and did that up to install into the car. But the car dropped off the handbrake and rolled down a hill at the slowest speed ever but it caused quite a bit of damage. Other than the visible damage we've got this wing catching which is absolutely terrible. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen off the wheels and then we're going to jack it up. I'm going to support it on that jack stand there and that's going to be supported by the suspension arm. And then we're going to go into the arch and there's the first panel we want to get to it has two torque screws in it. It's kind of hard to be able to display that so I'm just going to undo them and I'm going to pull out this inner arch liner. So as we pull that out we're going to go back in a second and the next thing we want to undo is we're going to undo the indicate bulb or indicator bulb and we're, not, we're going to pull the light bulb out of it so that literally just pulls out and we're going to pop that to one side once we've taken that out before we can even think about taking the wing bolts out we need to get part of the indicator out of the way and also the bumper so the indicator has a clip in it so we're going to take off these headlight uh, bulb covers there so we can get our hand in and you can just see there in the left hand part of the screen that's the clip for the indicator so you're going to reach around you're going to push it in and out and that's going to pop the indicator out here it might be a bit different if you have a slightly newer A3 because it will all be a one piece headlight but we need to get that out of the way then just pop off the electrical connector at the back and put your indicator to one side so to take the bumper off you've probably taken out your wheel liner I've not got mine on the car but the bumper just pulls out there's then two screws underneath the bumper, so this might be a bit of a weird view, but it's just to show you where they are underneath the skirt. So undo these two Phillips head or uh, cross head screws, and we've then got these four pot rivet type things on top. So we've got one, two, three, and four, and I've already kind of pulled one up there, but you need to kind of get under them and lift them, and you can sort of get a screwdriver blade in between, and you can pop them up and you then pull them out from on top. I've had mine off a couple of times when I replaced the engine. They might ideally do with replacing, but they still meet their purpose and function, so we're going to keep using them. Okay, so we're going to take the bumper off from the passenger side now as well, so that's going to pull off. We're going to take off these rubber skirt covers, or trim covers. It's going to pull them off and take them to one side. You can see the bumper's loose now, and that will just literally pull off. So you've got these four clips on top, the two screws underneath, and it sort of just pops onto either side and it may be screwed into the arches as well. So now the bumper's off, we can start to deal with taking the wing bolts out. I'll just to sort of show you how it is after as well. So there's four bolts on top. And there's that little piece of foam that's going to come off as well. But we're going to get all of these bolts undone. Now if you're taking your wing off for any other reason, you might want to be a bit gentler than I have been but I've just sort of taken them off as quick as possible and then we've got this bumper brace as well and that's held on with torque screws so you're just going to undo those and that's pretty much there to guide the bumper on and to give it a good area to sort of clip in and against okay so once you take these off as well um, I'm maybe not showing it but every time I take stuff off I put them either together or I have a little pot or something that I can put all of the nuts, bolts or screws or whatever into one place. So when I put it back together and make it easier. Underneath that brace you've got two more bolts that need undoing. So we're going to get those undone. And again pop those to one side. And you can spot there's a bit of rust so depending on what you're doing you might want to have a quick look behind for cleanup. Now this bolt here, this is behind the door. It's a little bit awkward to get to. Uh, luckily though, it just undoes and you can hand thread it off. So if your socket set's too big or your spanners aren't the right size, just get something on to crack it off and then to take the rest off there. Then inside the wing, we've got two more bolts. And you just can undo them with your socket again. I mean, this is actually quite a nice, simple, straightforward job to do, but it's just knowing where everything is and how to get to it. So this is the second time I've had to do a wing on the car. When I bought the car, the original passenger side wing was rusted. So it's not the first sort of set of experience I've had, so I had a bit more confidence to come into this with. There's two bolts that might catch you out, which nearly caught me out as well. 
well, they did until I realised I'd take them off. And it's just down here, right underneath. We need to take these off, and the paint was kind of built up over them, so you might want to either get a Stanley knife or screwdriver just to break away the paint so you can undo them. Now the wing should be good and ready to come off now, but you might need to give it a bit of a tug because, well, you take off this uh, sealing strip as well, but you might want to give it a bit of a tug because of it would have been glued to the bodywork. So once it's loosened up, we're just going to pull that off and take it to one side. Now watching the bottom, as I give it a shake, you can see all of the sort of dirt that comes loose and if you've sort of seen the other video where I prepped the wing the new wing I got had some rust in that area so you're going to want to clean up any new wing and just make sure it's protected down in that area you might want to add some heavy duty paint because you're not going to see it but you want to protect it and also there's years and years of dust that have built up here so all I've just done I've gone over it and I've cleaned it all up and I've found this just on the inside where that dirt built up so I'm going to use a brass brush, I've just sped this up, but I'm just going to take it all the way back to bare metal as much as I can, because we want to stop the corrosion. Now normally I rust convert stuff, um, this was a little bit unexpected in some ways, so I just brushed it back and I ended up using chassis paint on it. So it wasn't the newest ch chassis paint, we'd actually been using some of it the day before on my friend's car, so I just used whatever was left in the tub but it just meets its purpose. I just literally wanted to slap some on just to seal the rust up and I'll put it on from both sides. So I'll show the back side in a minute. And it's just literally to seal it in. I don't want the rust to then spread up to the rest of the bodywork. Uh, and again from the back side, and there was a little spot there that we can see. So I've put the new wing on. That one wasn't too easy to capture. But we've I've loosely done up all the bolts. So I've given myself some room to manoeuvre so I can make sure that all my gaps around the wing are perfect and that it fits in the way I wanted it to. So we've got the two bolts underneath, we've got the bolt inside the door, we've got the four bolts on top, you've also got the bonnet release cable as well. So you want to make sure that you get that lined up. Not showing on this as well, there's a little foam padding that fits underneath the wing. If you can get that lined up in the right place then great. And we're going to fit the four bolts back in. And there's this foam pad that we took off earlier. We'll put that back in in a second as well. So that fits right into that groove. So we've got that done and fitted. Now we've got the two torque screws to go into this area. Now you can see that's slightly not lined up. So I've pulled it into line and moved some of the other bolts, or loosened the bolts on top so I can get that into the right position. And we're then going to get this all tightened up the bumper brace goes back on. Luckily this can only go in and fit one way. And we're going to put the torque screws in. So once they're in, we're pretty much ready to get the bumper back on actually. So when the bumper goes on, it was actually a little bit tricky and my bumper's seen better days. So I'm not sure somewhere if things are out of alignment. Uh, I mentioned I'll show you the two screws for that inner panel. So we're going to take that inner panel and we're going to pop that in first and we'll screw that up and then we'll jump across to the bumper that I was talking about. You're going to pop the indicator in as well and you might just want to quickly test that because if you have got a wheel arch liner you're going to hide that away from yourself. But we're sticking the two torque screws and maybe one of the things that you, you can do, I mean it depends how far you want to go, you could maybe add some special coating like some wax oil to the inside of the wing. Uh, it's going to make it a mess if you ever go back in there, but it will inhibit whatever rust might come up. So now we've got that done, we are going to put the bumper back on. So I've already put the bumper back in. Uh, I've pulled it over the sides and clipped it on at the sides, and we're going to put these rivets back in on top. It's going to line the holes up, and they just push down, and you leave the little sort of centre pole thing up, and you then just push it down. It might not push down uh, perfectly with your thumb, so you might want to use a flat part of the screwdriver or something just to get them in. But before I do push them all in, um, in case I've got to take it out and reline stuff, I'm just going to get them loosely put in before we pop that top bit down. Again, these bits were actually the biggest pain in taking the bumper off. So if you, can, if you get stuck with these, stick a screwdriver down the back, use a mirror, get your head in there, get a torch in, and just see where you get the gap between the, uh, the little rivets to push them up putting them back in is a piece of cake compared. 
So we're going to put these sealing strips back on. I just like to get them lined up as best I can, but they're just there to sort of seal it off and stop the bonnet smashing on everything. So put on the driver's side, then going to get the passenger side one popped on. Don't have covered it already, but if you have missed it, make sure you've put on any strips that you have taken off elsewhere, like the one on the wing. And yeah, they might not feel like they're going on properly, so just make sure they are nice and tight like I have done here, uh, because it, it was obvious that I was missing that a little bit. Um, the indicator goes back on. This is a nice easy fit actually. It just pops on and it then just pushes into place. You just sort of push it in and it, it's done. That is a really, really easy part to fit. I thought it was going to be more of a pain than it was when we first took one off. Uh, put your headlight cover back on. I think we're nearly there by putting the wheels back on. And we've got the two screws that we took out from the bumper earlier, so we're going to fit them back underneath. It's not the most ideal to film taking these out or putting them back in, um, but just feel like if I give you some context of where they are, you know where to look for when you are going to undo these. Also, you don't necessarily need to jack the car up to do this or take the wheel off, but it does make it a lot easier. So we're going to put all the wheel nuts back on. They're going to get torqued up to 75 newton meters, and I'm going to do them up in a star type pattern. I'm going to take the jack stand out now that the wheel's loosely tightened. I won't fully tighten it till it's down on the floor. I'm going to undo the jack. I'm going to let the pressure off the jack so it lets the car down. And that's pretty much done. Now, just to show you the door opening, it's not catching on the metal anymore. If you look around, we can see that the spacing is pretty good as well. It's about perfect between everything. And I'm quite happy with how the wing looks and fits in with the car. The door needs tidying up, which is going to get done. But you can join me on that when I do the video series for painting the whole car. So the main object of getting the wing replaced wasn't just to replace the wing. It was to give myself a good basis for sticking new paint on the car. And that's going to be part of the big series I'll be doing over the next month or two. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been handy for you. If you do have any questions, please leave them down below. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel and share the video any way you think this is going to help anyone. Cheers. Bye.